The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Okay, can you introduce yourself? We'll start there. Yeah, yeah. What's up? I am uh, Lil Yachty. One and only. <laughs> the one and only? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I literally just got off the plane, you guys, from Atlanta, mm-hmm. and you grew up there. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about like what life was like growing up there? Uh, I don't know. Chill. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't do too much. I mean, I, I think, like, any other kid hung out. You have sister, though? Uh, my sister's six years younger than me. Yeah. So, sis- sister and you, though, any more siblings? Or that's it? You have a brother? Yeah, he's six years older. Okay. Same parents? Same father. Same dad. Me and my sister have the same parents. Same parents, yeah. Because you and your sister are super close, right? No. No? We're close. I mean, okay. we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, she's she's like nineteen, right? So, oh, like, so she's going through the the yeah. phase. I get it. I have I have two brothers. Um, it waxes and wanes. I feel like it comes back around. I think so too. As yeah. you get older. Um. Okay. So you studied. You went to Alabama State. Oh, yeah, I did go to Alabama State before you dropped out. She sucked. What did you study there? Communications. <laughs> But I was really trying to, I was just trying to, I was studying how to get rich. <laughs> That's what I was studying. In my head, I was like, fuck, I got I have to get rich. And so when did music start? Was it while you were at Alabama or no, even before then? High school, like 11, 12th grade. And just like doing shit at home yeah. and stuff with friends? I would, I would like get money and book studio time. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like 2014, probably 2013. 20, 2013, 2014, started 2015, I took it seriously, blew up by 2016. Um, can you talk me through your move to New York? Yeah. Um, man, that was a, that was such a bold move as a kid, right? I was like 17 years old. And um, I was 17 years old, and I was just like, I had just graduated high school, like May 25th. I, I think that was the day when we walked across the stage and then May 26th, I packed up my bags like, Mom, I'm moving to New York, you know? And I think I made that decision overnight. I had a friend that lived in Harlem on 158 from Broadway. And uh, he just let me come, like, stay on his couch, you know? And it was... Um, so this is before you went to school? Yeah. This was, like, the summer. Would, this is when I said, Mom, I'm not going to school. Okay. You know? And I came out here, and I had uh, no money. Yeah. I had an EBT card. But I didn't have a job. Is that when you worked at McDonald's? No, that was before. That was in high school. Okay. I worked at McDonald's in high school. I was probably, like, 15 when I worked at McDonald's. Uh, I didn't have a job out here. And, you know, it was a self thing where I always felt like nobody would hire me because I had red hair. Because my mom used to paint, paint a picture in my head that nobody would hire you with right here. And maybe at the time they wouldn't have because I don't think things were as open as they are now. You know, as free going as they were in 2015. I think it was a lot harder. Um, like, you know, like as far as now, it's like, you know, tattoos on your face and colored hair and all these things, which I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm proud that like, things are coming this way but I don't think it was that open back then you know so like I used to it was in my head I'd be like no need to apply for a job because nobody will hire me you know and like I wasn't getting rid of my image um and suppress did your mom support the move she was down absolutely not oh she was like no I don't want my baby to leave me I think she just thought I was gonna be like a failure really probably I mean I wasn't I said I'm not going to college and then like I had just got arrested right before then for uh, scamming. I think, what I was after? No, that was after. I was just doing a lot. Mm-hmm. You know. She's n- was nervous. Uh, my mom is old school. Ooh, excuse me. My mom's old school, right? So like, she she is like, graduate high school, go to college, graduate, get a good job. Mm-hmm. That's like her way of like growing up. It's like all she knows. So when I was like, I'm not going to college. It just broke her. She's like, oh, my God, like, what are you going to do? My mom wasn't really hip. It took me to break her to understand, like, the Internet and, like, you can this is you can make a living off. 
dude. Well, she's super involved in your stuff now, now, right? Now, yeah. My mom is fully invested. She's my business manager. She's your momager. Yeah, she's my business manager, yeah. Yeah, my mom, she's great. She lives next door to me. You, I mean, you were just on the phone with her. Yeah. Like yeah. two minutes ago. Yeah, my mom was. Um, so did you just start posting songs on SoundCloud or how did it? Yeah. And it just kind of... I mean, um, I think organically, yeah, it just started to kind of buzz, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's interesting because I just think of that specific time, uh -huh. you know? Now I feel like, not saying it would or it wouldn't, but it's, it feels like so much more oversaturated 100%. now than back in the t well, back at that time. Well, well, you know, at the time, I'll tell you, at the time, music was different, mm -hmm. especially hip-hop. It was much more aggressive, you know? At the time, it was, like, much more gangster trap and, like, you know, not so smiley. And Bitches, guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drugs, you know, like, not so much, like, smile, hair color, skinny jeans, you know? It was, like, not so much, you know? So, like, to, like, come into a scene, like, kind of kick the wall down, like, yeah, we here. <laughs> And we smiling. <laughs> we got color hair. <laughs> Did you feel like an outcast in that way? Oh, we were. But in that been, scene? In the best way, though. Yeah, because it's kind of flip it on its head. Well, I mean, I've kind of always been an outcast. You know, mm -hmm. like I didn't become famous then dye my hair red. I came into music with my hair red. I was in high school with red hair. Oh, really? So I was out, yeah, I was, I've was. i been an outcast shit for as long as I can remember. And what kind of music did you listen to like when you were in high school and stuff? Or even middle school? Uh, a lot of Coldplay. Yeah? Yeah, I love, love Coldplay. A lot of Coldplay, a lot of Lil B. <laughs> I had a really broad music taste. You know, a lot of Paul McCartney. I saw a Lil B perform once. Me too. In I Chicago. Was on the stage. Yeah? Yeah, I saw it in Florida, and I was on stage. I should have been in the crowd. I was cheering them on harder than anyone in that crowd. I kidnapped him once. What do you mean you kidnapped him? Like, like he, he came to Atlanta, and I, like, picked him up and made him stay at my house. Stop. Did you have an amazing conversation? Uh, was it as uplifting as his, you thought it was? I think I talked his ear off. I think he was probably ready to leave. <laughs> He's like, okay, kid, like, I got to go home like, now. So I was just so invested. I probably asked him so many questions, and I kept playing him his own music. <laughs> <laughs> It was bad. I was. What about terrible. him was, draws you in? I just grew up on Lil B. You mm -hmm. know, like, he was like one of the first rappers like that I saw, like, was cool and was like promoting positivity. But it was still like, I get bitches, you know, Mixing and I'm fly. Two things. <laughs> but spread peace. And then he would go make a song about guns and then be like, but be peaceful. I don't know. He was a big contradictor, but I loved it. I thought he was so cool. And he wore these really dirty vans. And I just, and I just thought he didn't give a fuck. I thought it was so cool. You know, he wore these dirty jeans, super skinny, and he was he had gold teeth. And I just thought he was cool. You know, I really mm -hmm. thought he was so cool. Then as I got older... I don't know. I just always had a lot of respect for him, always, mm -hmm. to this day, you know, because I genuinely, every single day of my life, listen to his music. Do you feel like there's a pressure in the music industry, specifically in hip-hop, to kind oh, of... Yawning, what the fuck? <laughs> Hell yeah. It's, <laughs> pr it's pressure in, uh, it's, it's pressure for any entertainer. Mm -hmm. But to, like, c continue making... I mean, I'm sure there's all types of pressures, but specifically in the hip-hop community... Mm. Is there pressure to rap about those things? To rap about guns and I mean, drugs and it's, girls? It's just like... And money and... If you are someone who is in tune with the culture mm -hmm. and you are aware, you know what people like to hear and what they don't like to hear. Right? Like, I know for a fact if I drop my next song and I'm like... And I'm on that bitch, and I'm like, hey, nigga, go to school. <laughs> nigga, nigga, take your girl to dinner. Treat her right, nigga. <laughs> nigga, God first, nigga. They, niggas would be like, nigga, what? <laughs> Shit, whack. You know what I'm saying? So, like, so it's like, it's, it's unfortunate, right? But it's about understanding 
for me personally, it's about understanding two things, right? Understanding what someone wants and then understanding what you want and then detaching yourself, your personal self, me personally, my personal self from the art um, and, and trying to meet my needs first, right? Because at this point in my life, I've been in the music industry six years now. It'll be seven in March. Technically seven, it'll be eight in March, but the first year I wasn't famous. So, um, and now I'm at the point I just make what I want to make. You mm-hmm. know, at first I was trying to make music to please everybody. Like I was like, I'm trying to get a radio record or a strip club record or I, this record or I want to show people I can rap or do anything, right? But now in the stage of my life, right? I'm like, I just do it for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I do it for me. You know, at first it was the pressure though, especially depending on what record label you're on. I was on a all black, at first independent record label and it was all street artists you know it was Migos City Girls Lil Baby out of Atlanta yeah QC and me and I was the only one over there making your type of music yeah you know (laughs) so you know it was maybe you know but I think it's all on your integrity Mm -hmm. right like I have so much integrity now You know, I mean, I always have, but now it's like I would never do something I didn't want to do. You know, I would never do something because I feel like, ah, they want this, right? But also at the same time, like I said, I know what what they don't want to hear because I have an ear. Mm -hmm. So I would never go and do some shit like whatever, you know? And that's not to say I wouldn't make it because, you know, making music is really my form of expressing myself. So I'll go and I make songs all the time just for myself or just to talk about a situation that happened today that I'm upset about or something that's just bothering me or something. I don't know. It's like journaling. It's like a form of therapy. Yeah. So like I, I, I have songs where it's like it may not even be a hook. I'm just literally talking about what's been going on, right? Mm-hmm. Just getting it off. And I probably never even listened to it again, but I just, I just how I felt, right? Because when I'm, when I'm uh, making music, it's like, it's weird, right? Like when I'm not in an album mode, it's like I'm just kind of making music about however I'm feeling. But you know, when I'm going into like an album mode, it's like a whole life change. Like it's like you dial into, for me personally, I dial into like a certain way of living. You know, um, depending on what the project is about. You know, like my last project was called Michigan Boat Boy. And it was kind of like a mixtape, but it was like a album slash mixtape. And I, 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 I wanted to shine light on the underground artists in Detroit because there's so many talented artists. And I was damn near living out there, you know, living in Detroit. Like For how long? A couple months. I was just coming back and forth, you know. They were coming to Atlanta. I was going out there. And that's like a whole just different culture, you know, being outside in Flint and just, you know, being outside, you know, on a different type of time, you know, was completely different than the next album that I'm dropping soon. That's a psychedelic alternative album, you know, that has no 808s on it whatsoever. It's not a rap album, which, which that was like, you know, that was a really intense living form, you know, like, which I don't really want to get into deep because I don't want to give it away yet, but it was just like a real, like, life altering shift of every day and it's for me right like when you get so deep into it and that way of living and just that lifestyle while you're making a certain body of work (laughs) that like once it's over and you like close the chapter right like you finish the album it's just like like i kind of needed a minute um what is your creative process like um, or does it change per project? I think it's changed in my career, mm-hmm. you know, over the years. I think a lot of my albums, I was like a kid, right? So, like, I was, like, 18, 19, so I was just, like, making songs. I'm slapping them together, you know, like, whatever, you know? And then I'm 25 now, so, and I'm so much more wiser. And I have, like, I just, I know so much more. Uh, I, I always say... This next album I'm dropping is like chapter two of my career. Um, 
And it was a completely different process. You know, it was uh, very intense. It was a, a lot of a, a lot of everything. It was every day. You know, it was like a nine to five. It was like a. I was like a, yeah, but it was, it was like a five to nine. A five to nine a.m. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of the time you guys record or you record in the night. Yeah, but I was out here, so I would sometimes start around three. It was all day, all night. I wasn't doing anything. I was in the studio every day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Do you have any advice for your younger self? Like if you could go back to 18-year-old? No. You wouldn't do anything I, Because I could. Yeah. But then I may not be who I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I don't but I, what if you could just whisper in your ear like some advice or something? No. Save. Yeah. Save. Uh, Save money. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk about financial stuff. I've yeah. been really into talking with different people who come on the show. Yeah. I feel like especially if you didn't grow up with someone who can cut, you know, these are things that yeah, are not well, taught to you in literacy school. literacy is so important. You know? 100%. And, and I think it's, the main thing is that they don't expect you to become rich. You know, unfortunately, not in lower income cities and not in, middle class because they want they don't see themselves becoming rich ever it's just like it's almost like a dream it's almost non-existent so no one's teaching you how to save millions or how to deal with taxes or how to like invest you know or... none of that because it's like it's not a thing in the community mm -hmm. realistically so you know and i didn't even grow up lower income i grew up middle class but like no one told me like I mean, no one like say hey 18 year old boy you know when you get that first million dollars I don't blow it, you know? Don't I mean, and I, I, I've obviously done a lot more, but I just would have told my younger self to save. Like, I was, like, going crazy. You know, like, I was spending millions and millions and millions. And on what millions. kind of stuff? Just <laughs> what do you spend millions and millions on? Cars, cars, watches? Jewelry, clothes. I would go in stores and just buy everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was so stupid. Stupid. But do you feel like that is a pressure in this no, culture? It was not a pressure. I was just stupid. I was just like 18 and I would go on Gucci. Like, I need everything. I need every color. Oh, yeah, it's 48,000. Card. <laughs> oh, my God. See y'all later. Send it to the house. I was just stupid shit. I was just, I never had money. Yeah. Right? So it was just like, I was just like a kid and I was just like, I could buy it. I could do what I want. I don't care. No one can tell me anything. Yeah. You know? Um, and I don't want none of that shit. Like I don't want, I don't want none of that shit. No, I give it away. I didn't give all the away. I didn't give everything away. You know. So it's like I just, I just would tell myself to save. Like you won't care about it mm -hmm. in a couple of years. Like you won't, you will not care about this shirt in six colors. And you're gonna grow a lot. So you're not gonna be able to fit that medium anymore. Right? <laughs> you know, you're, 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 so it's like, I would just tell my younger self to save. And it's hard to tell someone who's never had something say, mm -hmm. right? Like it's hard. Like it's, I'll, tell, I'll tell the younger artists that, and it's hard to, and I feel, not stupid, but I feel wrong. Cause it's like, I'm gonna tell this kid who's never had anything not to go buy this chain. He, that's what he want. You know, and I get it, I was there. And I feel like it's unfortunately just one of those situations that you genuinely have to experience. I really believe like some things you have to just experience in life. Obviously, it would be good to have that boost behind you. Like if I had somebody to say like, yeah, put some money in this up and coming business, you know, that would have been sick. But I didn't, you know, so like obviously it is good to have around, but some things you have to just go through. How do you like also um, like all the noise in your ear? From people who are trying to make you take this project, this project, who are making money off of you. Like, do you have any advice about that? You know, I never had that problem. Really? You know, I was always like, I've always been very, like, I've always had strong leadership skills. Okay. I was never like, like, like. Like no one could ever like even now seven years in the industry, twenty five years of life, nobody's ever could ever have make me drink. You know, I still have never been drunk. Like, no one can make me, like, can no one, like, it can't be, like, a room full of smokers. I'm like, oh, shit, I got it. That blunt. You know, like, I just don't care. So, I'm, like, I think when I was younger, my thing was, like, we're going to get all the money we can. So, it wasn't no pressure. I just wanted it. Mm -hmm. I would do whatever. I don't care. We're getting the money. You know, now I'm older. Like I said, I have stronger integrity, and, and I believe in certain things and stand for certain things now that's, like, and I don't value 
that's another thing about me. I don't, I don't, I don't value materialistic nor money the same as I did when I was eighteen and nineteen. When I was nineteen, I thought that new Bentley was everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought I needed ten watches. I, I wore a watch on one wrist, one wrist. I don't. Why do I need fifteen? You know, like, like why do I need? Like, I just, I don't know. You know, and I don't regret it at all because I went through it, and now I have decentralized. All of these things, and I'm and I feel good about it. And mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not trying to spread a message to everyone else. I don't care. Well, honestly, I don't care what people do. I really don't. I'm like, I'm not gonna tell you, hey, don't go do what you want to do. Me personally, I feel good about the fact. I know for a fact, like, I lose shit, and I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, like I had lost. I left my Patek in Turks, you know, uh, my uh, and and I and I and I love that I'm so comfortable. I'm just like, oh. Maybe somebody needed it more than I did, you know. Or like, or if I thought someone took it, I was like, oh, maybe they probably needed it more than I did. That's fine. I, I get another one one day, right? And 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 what that does is it helps with like my stress levels. Like I don't ever stress because I don't I don't value anything, you know. Like I value like my family, my friends, but like shit like watches and chains, like. But don't you know, you think time, that's rare in oh, the industry I, I, you're oh, in? Extremely. I've hung out with certain artists in private. And I have like 15 chains on. And I'm like, it's just us. You know, like it's no cameras. What do we, <laughs> what do we, why are you, I have. Do you say that to them? No, I don't. I don't, like I said, I don't care what people do. It's just a thought in my head. But like some people need those things. You know, some guys, some guys, like it's like superpower. You know, they feel seen, you know, like I don't, A, care to be seen unless it's time to be seen. And B, uh, I'm usually trying to hide, right? Like, I'm not, like, stepping out like, hey, y'all, I'm here. I'm more, like, head down, getting where I need to go, you know? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I, it's funny. I never care to be the center of attention, seriously, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, and, like, again, like I say, it's my way of life, right? Like, I'm, but, but I'm happy because it helps me because I'm very, I lose a lot of shit. Like, I've lost a lot of jewelry, right? I think a lot of jewelry has been stolen from me. Uh, I just, a lot of shit happens when you got a lot of people in and out of your house, you know? So, um, I, it, like, it's good for me, right? Because I just, I do not value anything yeah. materialistic. It's just like, things come and go. You can always get more. It's whatever. What's the best financial advice you've gotten? I don't think any. <laughs> I don't think I've ever really gotten much, you know? Maybe like. Do you have an advisor now? No. Your mom just kind of helps you and she stuff? She just manages everything. Yeah. Like everything. But she's on top of her shit. She knows oh, what yeah. she's my doing. My mom's shit. <clears throat> I, I don't know what I would do without my mom. And I, she keeps telling me, like, I have to um, learn. She has to teach me everything just in case something happens to her because she handles everything. So if something happened to her, everything would just freeze. And like like she she ha- handles all the finances. Everything, every bill, every card, every everything. And even like this pizza company that you were t- mom handles, talking every, about. Anything that's a dollar having to deal with me, she does. Mama does it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do you feel like you save more now? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Well, not a lot more. Just because a lot of times now I'm just like. Like, I'm more like, I don't need to have, I used to be like, I need everything, Mm -hmm. you know? And then I was just like. Well, you're more comfortable with yourself now. Well, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm very more particular, you know? Like at the time, it's like I had never had Gucci, you know? So I was like, oh, now I want all the Gucci. But now I've had it, it's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do I need, I probably don't even need Gucci now. It doesn't make people happy. Well, sometimes. No, but don't you? I don't know. I feel like even myself with like material goods and stuff, it's like um, it's a fleeting happiness. What's whatever you value, you know, and it's a personal trait, you know. I mean, some people value it. Some people value a loyal relationship. Some people value food, you know. Like I, some people, I cannot. Some people value their pets. I don't. I don't care for pets, right? But I, I respect. Val- don't, didn't you have a bulldog I or had something? A bulldog and I what gave it happened away. to your dog? Too much work. I gave it away. No. Right? But but I respect it, right? But it's I don't value that. You know, my like, cat is I my va- everything. See, like <laughs> I value friendship. My friends are everything to me. Yeah, I my love friends my are friends, everything to me. You know, too. like on a different level. I truly love my friends. They mean everything to me, and and they're like, 
soul centered. My like only thing that I really care about. What do you look for in a friend? I don't look for friends. You can't look for friends. No, I don't look for friends. But it's a, a feeling, an energy, and a, like a just a trust, a feeling of trust, security, a feeling of security. That's important for me. You know, if I feel like I'm secure and I can trust you. Has that changed at all, though? Have you had, like... Yeah, I've... I feel like getting famous or successful at a young age mm-hmm. can, like, affect your identity and, like, who you trust. Shit. And- I mean, getting famous at a young age affects everything, right? Like, it's like it makes you grow up in do- dog years, mm-hmm. you know? Because you just ever you ever, ever, like... You grow up in front of microscopes. Um, usually, depending on what kind of star you are, you become the breadwinner, right? Like so, like then everyone is on your payroll. Yeah, you know, and looking <clears throat> up to you, and you take care of everybody, and like you, you take you fund everything. So you have to grow. You have to get be more more mature. You have to understand that people look to you. You know, you become big bro even when you're little bro, even when you're younger. You know, uh, and I was something I had to realize. I also had to realize becoming a public figure, what that meant. You know, it's, I don't think a lot of people think nor care, and that's fine. I respect it, but understand when you become a public figure, like what that means, and like how many people really look at you. You know, and pay attention to everything you do. And I'm not saying I'm the best role model. I'm not even saying I am a role model, but like it's just like people, people watch. Yeah, has it ever be has it ever felt too much? No, nah, hell nah. no. No, man, hell <laughs> no. Nah. If I wasn't doing this shit, I would have been stealing my mama's house, broke as hell. No, I'm not saying too much to to say no to it all, but <clears throat> does it ever give you anxiety? I get anxiety when I go out in public and there's a lot of people in the room. Mhm. Because you feel like they're like watching you and stuff. I don't know. I just don't like to be around a lot of people. I don't know what's happening. I only got two hours. Yeah. But, no, it's never too much. But are those boundaries that you've had to create, especially as if you got as you've gotten older? Yeah, I feel like, you know, rappers are targets. You know, it's just hip-hop is just a different... Um, yeah, give me a little bit of the ins and outs of your take on hip-hop. Because well, I'm not... It's just a different light. In that know? world. Um, <clears throat> uh, territory alone is a very flashy territory. You know, and people want what they can't have. People also understand that uh, sometimes you may not have another chance at something. So you could look like a come up to somebody, you know, a chance or shit. He right here. I know he got some on him. You know, like and like be robbed is what you mean. Yeah, of course. Have you ever been robbed? Nah, no, never. My house was broken into, but I was out of town. But you always have security with you, yeah. Yeah, no. No, only when I do shows. Only when you do shows. You know, I don't. I don't like security for real. I, I don't have no security out here. Oh, I thought maybe you had one in the car. Mm-mm. Um, yeah, because I feel like for privacy, it's difficult. I just, well, I just like I like to I like to maintain my like feeling of just like normalcy. Yeah, you know, and it may not be the safest, but I don't. I don't put my. I try not to put myself in situations where something bad should happen to me you know i'm not an outside person so like i'm not where i shouldn't be well you also don't seem like you're beefing with people either yeah it doesn't that doesn't matter though really not, you don't have to be beefing with somebody who want what you have no totally for the robbing yeah. but i just meant like for other stuff for anything you just don't know that's a cruel world mm-hmm. you know you just gotta be very understanding be very secure but no i'm not i only like to get security like if i just absolutely need to we're going to LA because LA is crazy. But like um, home, I have no security. Now. I have house security. Yeah, of course. Like I have a twenty-four hour guard at my houses, my property. But you're not like walking around with no. security sitting in this room right now. Yeah. Mm-mm. I just don't. I'm. I'm. I just don't. I don't give off that energy mm-hmm. to people. You know, like like. Nah, I'm. I'm a pretty inviting guy. I don't. I talk to people. You know, if they come up to me, I just don't. If somebody like wanted to harm me, it just would be like it would have to be like uh, he would have to be sick in the head, right? Because I don't, I don't like, I don't hurt anybody, I don't bother anybody. 
So I never really just mm, I'd be chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How would you say your life has changed the most since you kind of popped off? Just privacy. Yeah. You know, I was 17 for 17 years living with my mother. Private. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Normal life. Yeah. Is it ever hard? Because I feel like once you go there and you do become successful, you, you can't come back from it. It's coping. Right? Like just understanding what my life is now. Yeah. And coping with that. How and do you like, cope with it? I mean, just like it is what it is. And it started. And it's something you ask for. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't like, I didn't like wake up and went viral on and, and some shit. And like, oh my God, now I'm like famous. Like I prayed and dreamed of this. And worked hard to get there. Exactly. So like, it's just coping and understanding. And like, just, I don't know. I just, I quickly altered to the light. You know, like I just quickly understood, okay, this is my life now. This is who I am. I am this person. I can't do everything that I used to could do. I can't go to every party. I can't hang outside. I can't, like, I just can't. It's fine. Do you have role models, though, who who relate to that? Or uh, people in your life that you can talk to about these yeah, things? Yeah, you know, Drake is, like, one of my best friends, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I asked him, Drake, Tyler... Uh, uh, Drake is like I talk to Drake every day, and Tyler. I, I call Tyler on a, on a blue, you know. But will you guys talk about these things? Like, well, I ask have, any questions I have that you relate to yeah. each other on the fact of like, okay, yeah, maybe I can't was, go to a party. You know, privacy or... thing. I I don't. I just don't <clears throat> care to do it. Drake loves parties. Yeah. Drake is a party thrower. I mean, I've seen him yeah, at many yeah, parties. He loves parties, but but he knows he knows who he is, so he knows where he cannot be, mm-hmm. right? But Drake is also like an entity in roles with like fifty people. So if he wants to go, he's gonna go. He doesn't care, right? But like, I ne- me and Jake are like when it comes to like going outside with two different people, he likes to party. You know, he likes to host. He likes to party. I'm a lot more quiet, reserved in the cor- in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where we differ, but yeah, and I, I like, I feel like I'm thankful and appreciative of those relationships because I know I can ask Drake anything. He'll never, never, ever, 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 ever judge me. You know, like he'll give me an honest answer and his honest idea, take on something, you know, and that's not something that everyone in the industry have. A lot of people, there's a lot of people who are left alone and feel alone and feel like because if everyone around you you're the only famous person around you no one can feel like no one can relate Mm -hmm. and no one can check you either well yeah or just like nobody can relate you know like if you just you're having like a problem in something musical musically or something about money or just like oh no you know like every day is not a good day right so like yeah you're human right so like if you feel like no one around you, no one around you can relate, then who can, who you talk to? Nobody. Then that's a bottled up, built up something, you know. And bottled up, built up emotions are never ever good, ever, never, never. They turn it just it turns bad, mm-hmm. right? So like, I don't know. I don't hold nothing in, but I also don't find myself getting aggressive rarely ever. I'm a very grateful person. I know. Yeah. You are. So with that being said, understanding being of being grateful of my life and appreciative of all the things that not only that I worked hard for, but that I've just been, you know, like I, just the life that I've been a- given. Uh, I try not to like fantasize with how something could have been better or why didn't something this go this way or why I didn't do this or I should have got that or. Cause it's like it's all every to me everything is a win. So with all these mindsets, right, with the decentralizing, materialistic, and being thankful and grateful of my life, all these things help me with a very stress-free life. You know, a very relaxed, go with the flow. Everything's a win life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're sitting here right now. It's almost like zen-like. Yeah, yeah. There's not like nervous, anxious energy. I mean, I meet a lot of people mm-hmm. and there are people, even myself, I can be that way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Life is life. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, it's no one has all the answers. You figure it out as you go, you know. Um, if you're not happy with something, figure it out. Mm-hmm. So... 
you grew up with your mom. Obviously, you work mm-hmm. with her too. Um, can you and your sister? Both my parents, but I just live with my mom. But can you talk about the importance of these women in your in your life? Because I just have to compliment you. I feel like you have always been the most respectful. Yeah. And like I've met and know a lot of guys in the industry. Yeah. And well, my mom is just like. <clears throat> She's just a really great person. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because we didn't have the best relationship growing up. You know, like I was a teenager and like, you know, as a teenager, you want to stay out a little later, you know, or you want to have company when, when, you know, and and my mom worked two jobs. So she like, she was real stressed, real stressed, a lot of built up stuff, a lot of stress, a lot of just, my mom was just always irritated. And we, mm. oops, sorry. We would nod heads a lot. We would bump heads a lot because she just was always ticked off about something, you know? And I was doing, always trying to do my own thing. So once I got famous, you know, and like retired her, took a lot of stress off of her. Um, but one thing was, was that I always watched my mom, right? So like, I just always saw my mom was very ladylike, very uh, like a real classy woman. I met my mom never seen my mother argue with a woman or a man other than my dad. But <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like I, my mom never argued in the street. She would never like you cut her off. She ain't even gonna honk at you and cuss. You know, like my mom didn't. If I got so even if a I ain't had a mom that like if teacher did something to me at school, she gonna come up there and try and fight the teacher. My mom was just like a real classy suit wearing. Heels, type, you know, type of. What did woman. she do for work, or what were the two jobs? Uh, she well, she was a pharmaceutical sales rep. So she sold like doctors' medicine, like okay. uh, like like prescription dry, dry skin and like, yeah, like uh, for um um derm- dermatologist. So like eczema mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot the other job. It's been so long. Yeah. You know, but um, she worked right. Um, a lot. So, uh, but she was such a like just professional woman, mm-hmm. such a classy woman, and such a nice. She loved nice things, and she was just just a great woman, you know. Um, and I don't know. I just always adored her, right? And you just kind of think about how you would want someone to treat your mom, you know, and your sister, you know. So like. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Like, how does that influence your view of just women in general? Um, I just, I just, um, I, I just, I, I don't know. I just kind of, my dad was not an aggressive person. Okay, so he, you know, and my, you guys have a good relationship? Yeah, my dad's sick. You know, my dad's awesome. You know, I, I, I got a lot of my ways from my father. And I never seen my dad yell at a woman. Except my mom. <laughs> but, but but even then, it was like one time, right? Like, and my mom was kind of crazy. So, like, it's not really his fault. But, but like, um, but my dad was a really, he's just a, both of my parents are really respectable people. So, you grew and, up with a lot of love yeah. in the house. Yeah. I mean, I won't say that, but, like, <laughs> okay. like, like, it was love, but it's not like they were just, like, hugging me and, like, showering me with kisses. But, like, but like they were just respectful people, right? So, like, I think you don't fall far from the tree, so you, and you are the environment you're around. Yeah. You know, so if you're around a person who's always, you know, smoking weed or hanging out with a bunch of men and cussing and, you know, arguing with people at corner stores and whatever, you know, like, you might may, may rub off on you. But mm-hmm. my parents were always both really respectful people in, in any situation. And um, my dad wouldn't hurt a fly. Super pussy, you know? So, like... like I don't think like, he's going to like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, super, super pussy. Super, like, skinny, thick, like, thin, paper thin. Like, <laughs> like psh, fall over. But but he was a, he was a great... He, he is a great person, great father. Um, really loving and uh, and like I said, a respectable guy. So like I think I just grew up watching him be respected and be respectable, and uh, I understood, you know, like that was the way. Like I didn't see much violence growing up, you know, like so I, I wasn't a violent person. So know? is that something you try to emulate then also in as like y- your dad now? Oh, uh, you know, just being. I mean. Loving and soft yeah. and present. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's early, so it's still a, in the early stage, but I can't, like I say. Have I'm you not... changed a diaper? No. <laughs> you haven't changed one diaper? Uh-uh. Oh, I'm not going to. Maybe tomorrow's the day. <laughs> I don't change diapers. Why? I just don't want to. You can't not change a diaper I, ever. I, I can't not, like, not. <laughs> change a diaper but isn't that part part of having a baby though no no mm -mm. no one diaper mm -mm. okay we'll see maybe that'll change i bet it won't it's crazy i'm ready for him to get out of one well if the baby s sleeps over yeah no she does then someone else change the diaper yeah okay <laughs> yeah i just don't want to okay i don't know I just don't but but i've seen it happen mm. <laughs> <laughs> but i just don't really care to do that but She's sick. Were you there when the birth happened? Of course. You were in the room? Absolutely. Like right there? Right smack there. And it was fine? She, uh, it was crazy. It didn't freak you out at all? Nah. It's nah. kind of beautiful. It's bringing light. I mean, it's intense, obviously, but... Yeah, it, it was... Do you think it made you grow up? No, I've been taking care of so many people around me for so long. And like I said, I value my friends. So like, yeah. it's been like, I've been felt unfortunately but like i was a father to like a lot of people mm -hmm. but like it just it's been a thing since you know i've always felt the need to like uplift the people around me or take care of the people around me house the people around me feed the people clothe the people around me so it's like i've been having like a father figure but now you Obviously actually it's a little it. different but like st i mean still it was the love i loved them you know like they were my kin they were my sons like they're my you know, so not really. Is your mom so happy to have a green baby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, okay, so obviously you mentioned briefly, but you don't drink. And no. I'm drinking you don't anything. smoke. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular reason? I'm just scared of alcohol. It burns. It burns? What do you mean it burns? It just burns. So you just don't like the taste or the feeling? Uh, it just burns. The throat It's like rubbing alcohol. Are you allergic? Oh, it just burns. Like, you know, when you drink it, it burns your throat. It's like swallow it with fire. Well, I guess you don't drink. I Most people don't just drink, like, hard liquor straight out of the bottle. People take shots. They do take shots, but. I don't know. I never had a mixed drink. I don't really care to. Yeah. I'm too crazy. But that's really fucking rare. One. Yeah. Just in general. Two, as a man. Three, in hip hop. I think I just have terrible eating habits. What do you mean? Tell me. I don't eat shit. You don't eat? No, I don't really eat shit. So, like, I don't really drink shit, right? Oh, you eat well? No, I eat, like, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so, like, I don't, I just don't, like, I, my diet is really small. So, I'm, like, full drinks is just, like, something I do not care about. What is some, what are the things that you normally eat? I like pizza. What? Pizza. Pizza, okay. So the frozen pizza. Chicken tenders. So no vegetables, no fruits. No, I don't eat vegetables. I, never, I don't eat vegetables or fruit. Or or steak or hot hamburgers or tacos or sushi. Like I never had none of that. Really? Yeah, I don't eat I don't eat none of that. I don't eat, I don't eat nothing. Do you think that's something you want to change? Not really. For just for like health reasons? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, next. Um I don't care. The food's not my thing. Well, you're selling it. No. So. Yeah. What? You're selling it. I love pizza. <laughs> yeah. One day. I mean, one day I'll get to it. You know? <clears throat> one day, maybe you'll have a farm in the backyard. One day. You know? Uh, one a day. little garden outside the kitchen. I mean, it's crazy. I have a garden. I have a, a lemon tree and an apple tree. Oh. Yeah. It probably might be dead. I don't take care of it. But but I had it once. You're like, I don't pick my lemons yeah, and I don't I change the fucking once. diaper. And they were working. They they were growing. I never go up there though, so I don't know. Okay, what was your relationship with mental health like growing up? Um, growing up, I don't I don't know. Like, was it ever talked about? Like feelings, emotions. No. Nah, but you know what's so crazy? Mm -hmm. I learned this when I started dealing with women. I'm like I'm I'm I'm. An ex I can be an extremely emotional person, but I'm also a strong heartedly com compartmentalize things. <clears throat> and when I got into music, 
the deeper I got into it, I just I'm just blessed and thankful that my brain is wired a little differently. And I was able to, unlike a lot of artists, split my life and, and have a personal life and, and and then have this life, you know, as an artist and not mix the two. Right. So with that being said, I was able to fully take my emotions out of it. It's a mean industry. You know, it's just cruel. I mean, you mean, you know, and I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, but it takes a certain way of thinking, compartmentalizing to like take yourself away from it. You yeah. know, because they don't you don't know me. Y'all don't know me. So why, why would I personally get hurt? about some shit you said you don't know me i know i'm a great person Mm -hmm. i know i'm awesome funny i know i got good music taste i know i make good music i don't care move myself then it don't hurt me i can read it and laugh like ha that was actually that was a good one you know and 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 go on about my day right um but at the same time as i started to uh develop relationships with women i started to learn how in tune i was with my emotions and i've always been a very great communicator you know, I've never been so in the whole things in. I'm like, I've rather, I've always rather nip something in the bud mm-hmm. and communicate how something made me feel and just address things and kind of get to the bottom of it. It's X, Y, Z happened, this happened, I don't like this, I don't like the way this made me feel, whatever, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just very in tune with my feelings and I don't know where it came from, but I just am. You know, I'm not like some guy that's like, Someone's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I never been like, like, oh no, what's wrong? You know, like, I'm nothing. I'm good. Like, I'm not that type of person. Like, but that's rare because yeah. a lot of men are just not taught how to vocalize their emotions. Well, I wasn't either. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe some of those. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I just never. I just feel like I. I never liked holding things in. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I've never really liked not addressing things you know it makes for a healthy relationship it also sounds like it makes for a stress-free life or more stress-free yeah i think the older i got it's like the more i started to be excited about the fact that like i just never stressed <laughs> i need to you know i need to rip a page out of your book yeah <laughs> you know it's just like you live and enjoy life for what it is and i mean the the older i got the deeper you get into like psychedelics and shit like you just start to process things a little different so do you do like mushrooms and I don't stuff do, i do acid dmt acid are you on anything right now no nah, no nah, i don't do nothing i don't do things outside of my house oh okay yeah yeah so like um do you micro or nope. you like fully go for it or to the moon to the moon to okay the moon. i've done acid twice in my life yeah not for many, many years i've never done dmt i'm not really familiar with dmt what, what does that feel like I mean, i've done I said over a hundred times. Uh, I'm kind of fried. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, DMT is it's interesting, right? Like, cause I don't do, I don't do psychedelics for uh, well, spiritual don't, purposes. Oh, you don't. No, but well, you don't party. It's not no, for no, no, party. No, absolutely not. No, it's it's for, for like uh, in internal it's, I mean, introspection. It's, it's just for yes, and for just inspection of all things art. You know, inspect music, inspect movies, inspect photos just like look at them differently Mm -hmm. listen to it differently watch something differently and just process it differently then you just start to think about think and like you said just have just almost assess life i've always i'll I'll, I'll, anytime i do a trip i'm i usually by the end of it am assessing my life okay you know like um and just trying to figure out why is something happening what am I doing right? Is there something I'm doing wrong? Whatever the case may be, you know? Um, And I think I just threw out so many trips started to really understand the way to go through life in an easier state. Yeah, do you feel like it helps you kind of grow as a person? I feel like it's helped me grow as a person. Yeah. And, and, And I've had many ego deaths, you know? Um, Can you walk me through like that? Just like the thought of just, I'm no better than anyone else. You know, I'm, I'm that's why, I, you know, I'm at the point now where I don't even walk with security. You know, I don't have, I don't wear jewelry. I don't have, I have a, I have a watch, but, you know, I don't wear 
I used to wear all these chains and, and diamonds. You don't have any diamonds and rings, and it's yeah. just I used to do. I used to think that stuff was needed because mm-hmm. you know, it's what I saw. Everyone at my label, all rappers, you're just having what's. So you think that's just the, like that's what a rapper thing. Like if you're a rapper, like you don't you're not perceived as a rapper if you don't have it on. But like it doesn't make me, you know. And these are when I started to like become so comfortable and just really understand like oh. I am who I am because of who I am, not because of what I have on. No, I am who I am because I'm just, this is me. This is how I was born this way. So then it's like, you know, and, and but still realizing that we're all equal, you know? Like, I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. We're equal. All of us are equal in here, you know? Because realistically, if someone kicked through that door and shoot us, we all die. Right, like it's not like. Don't look at it's, my God forbid, going. God forbid, right? But well, it's not I have like a little too much anxiety. It's for not that. like you get shot, you bleed out, and I get shot, and the bullet bounces off of me, right? Like Very we, true. Like we'll all start bleeding, right? So like, it's, there's no right reason for me to not have the same level of respect for one person as I would the next. But there's you know? a lot of people who don't think that way. Yeah, I think how, I, the way you think is beautiful. I just, like I say, I genuinely don't give a flying fuck what anyone else thinks, you know? like Because I can't. That's another reason that I stay stressed free is because I cannot force myself to try and figure out why someone is the way they are. Because I just learned, I realized that like some people just are just jackasses. Yeah. Right? Some a lot of people. Are, aren't, some people just dick. Some people are rude. Some people will just not ever have respect. Some people just will not get it. Right. And, and and I don't know if it's the best thing for me to not try and like I just don't I just don't stress I don't stress other people's ignorance. How do you not let that ignorance penetrate you though? Because I know who you are. And I know my judgment of character and I know the people around me are good people and I know that person probably would never be in my life anyways. Like I know I probably someone like that, that's high and by. Mm-hmm. You know? Hmm. And, you know, with life experiences, you just learn, like, life is really short. It's so short. It's so, so short. And that's another thing with them psychedelics. Like, you really understand that. You really get a grasp of not only is it so short, it's just so small. Right? Like, the universe is so small. The earth is so small. This this galaxy is so small. You know? Like, just, like, like I hope people don't think we're the only ones living. You know? Like, it's just so much more. You know, and even even more than that, just like, you know, I, I hadn't becoming going from high school and having no money to become this rapper and not like a mediocre rapper, like, you know, like a real rapper, you yeah. know, known around the world. And you just experience and you just you realize nothing is far fetched. You know, if I can go from a classroom, uh, you know, to a mansion. And then from a mansion, you know, to a jet, then from a jet to like someone else's mansion who's even bigger than mine. It's almost just about who you hang around, right? Like, <clears throat> and this is why, God, I go off topic. But, <laughs> but, um, one, I'm just going, one time I was on Instagram, right? And this, you know how you do like the things when you're like, someone can, someone can ask, like, ask me a question, right? And yeah. then they can, like, people can respond. So someone, this, this, this friend of mine asked, what's your ick? Okay. You you like what's your ick? And I was flicking through them. I'm just curious as to what people think. And this one chick said, um, "I I hate when he when he has a big bro. You know, like I hate when he when he got a big brother, right? Okay. And I, I responded to him. I was like, I sent it to him. And she was like, Yeah, I feel the same way. And I understand the mindset is like, I like like you know from the culture of like you know like him having a group of friends and he's like probably the runner, right? Like, he didn't want to go into the store to get the snacks. And, like, like he's not the big dog of the group, right? But in my mind, I've been in music seven years, right? I've been the big dog. I've been the one that everyone's looking up to. You can't grow mentally like that. You know, when you're the highest one up, you it's a ceiling, right? Because, A, you think that everything you've done, you've, you're content. You're like, yeah, this is it. Like, it's all you see. You know, and you're proud of it and it's your riches. And it's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, I'm I'm that nigga, right? But it's draining because people are just like hands out or pulling from you, pulling on you. No one's no one's uh, motivating you. No one is feeding you in anything, right? Um, so like, 
I, I, I need a big bro, right? Like, I need someone to show me, like, hey, you can do more. You know, like, that's a nice house, but look at mine. You know, oh shit, my house is actually small. You know, I, oh, nice car. This is my, this is my plane, right? Like you need, I, like you need, you need to be humble, right? Like you, you, like you, I need to be humble. I yep. love having. That's why I, I, like that's why I love the relationship that I have with Drake because, like, every time I'm around him or talk to him, I just learn so much. And I realize I can do so much more with my career, with my life, with my family. For just for I can just do much more, right? So I love a big bro. I lo- like I love the idea of having someone who's above me to sh- to pull me up, to help you grow. Yeah, to help me like to show me there's more to life. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's other sides of the world. There's this. There's that. Look at this. Try this food. Do this. Like look at these clothes. You don't have to wear that. Look at this. Just like you need it, right? Because if you don't have anyone, then then it's just all you know, and you're just like it, that'll get draining. If you're just constantly you're supplying everyone with the love and and resources, we so are human. Dry. We yeah yeah. yeah. I think so that's... so um I, I forgot why I jumped to this topic. I think it was because, damn, what were we talking about right before this? We were like, talking about m- mental health. <laughs> mental health, and then, uh, but it got into um. I started talking about the big bro thing because uh, psychedelics, and I was going to ask you when you started to get into psychedelics. We were talking about DMT. The world's really, p- if people small, small, yeah, yeah, exactly. everyone's connected, and no one's better than anyone else. When, I don't want to say the world's, yes, everyone's connected, but that's not what I mean. When I say the world is so small, I just mean like. There's more out there. Everything is obtainable. Yeah. Everything. Nothing is not obtainable. You know, like from uh, whether it's money you value to it's fine food that you value to traveling the world that you value. It's all so obtainable, but it's really a mental thing. You know, it really starts with allowing your mind to uh, to at least first think you can do something. You have to think. I could, I could I could maybe do that. I could, I, I, I'm going to do that, right? And that's so much easier said than done because that is a hard task at first. If you got bills, you got kids, and you're drowning in debt, and, you know, it's harder to be like, I could be a millionaire. And I'm looking at my credit card bills. My credit is terrible. And I got to pay my rent. And I got to, and I'm working three jobs. And, and I'm out, I got to feed my kid. You know, it's like a lot of shit. So it's, you have to get to a place where you can treat your mental, calm your mental state, and then mentally you can first. I think the first thing in achieving any goal is allowing yourself to think you can do it, mm-hmm. right? You'll never be able to do something if you think you can't. If you're like, I, I should, I don't know. Like I would like to, I would like to start selling paintings, but I got school on Mondays and I got, I got. I got work on Tuesday through Saturday. So, like, realistically, like, like I, I can't really paint like that. I got to pay bills. So, like, I would love to get in this. Like, I would love to sell paintings, but I got to I gotta worry about this first, right? So, like, you have to, <clears throat> and that's understandable, but you have to find a way to get to a part. And that's sometimes sacrificing. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice things, but you have to believe in yourself, you know, and trust your might, you know, Um because anything is possible, right? But it's it, it's harder said than done, and I hate saying it because it always sounds like I'm trying to make something seem so easy, and that's not the case. Because I know that it it is it is is a it is a task, but I just like to say it because it's true. No, I think that's really great advice. I think I swear I need to look this up later because it's gonna bother me. I think it was Lauren Hill. It was someone like won a Grammy one time and mm. or in some speech she gave and she was like, you guys are all looking at me up here and are probably like, oh, it's so amazing. Good for you. But she's like, I want to remind you all that like every one of you have the opportunity to like also be up here mm-hmm. and like you have to believe in yourself at the end of the day. Kind of like similar sentiment. And it's true. I think I, I said this on a podcast actually that's coming out this week. Of like I know a lot of amazing, intelligent, beautiful people who the only thing that's stopping them from reaching their dreams is themselves Absolutely. and the fear of failure. Absolutely. And not trying because they're so afraid of failing. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% I agree. I have so many friends like that myself, unfortunately, but it's just 
I know. And don't you want to just like shake them? And you're like, I, I see so much I, fucking potential I do. in you. I do shake them, but <laughs> okay. it's, it's hard, you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they have to. You have to want it for yourself, right. but you have to also just um, be okay with falling on your fucking Absolutely. face. Absolutely, absolutely, because it happens even after you succeed. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no person who just lives a life and you. It doesn't have problems. Yeah. yeah. It's just, un, it's unreal, you mm-hmm. know? It's unreal. Do you see a therapist or have you ever seen a therapist? No. No? When I'm, do not you... against, I'm not against therapy. Yeah, you just have it yourself. No, yeah. Okay. I just haven't met one. I just haven't met one. I met one on a plane. I retired therapist on a plane once and I was kind of super excited because she was so sick. But she was like retired and I, maybe I should call her. I never called her. She told me I could call her, but... um. When did you first start getting into psychedelics? Like 20, maybe 2018. And how did that come about? Did like a friend Probably of Rocky. Yours... Okay, so he's into that stuff? Well, he, I think he used to be. I don't think he does anymore, but I just... Rocky was one of those per- first people I like was super looking up to and just thought was like sick when I got into industry. And like, I just kind of like would start to overhear him talk about it. And just like the trips and how I was. And I was like, oh... That's cool, you know, like, <laughs> you know, because I thought I, I still think I still think Rocky's cool, but like I used to think he was so cool. So I was like, probably Rocky, like no, not probably for sure. Rocky. Was it ever scary, or you just kind of? I think right the only the first scary thing is just like before you do it, what'll happen? Mm-hmm. You know, you hear so many things, right? But I've never been a person to just trust what other people say. Yeah. It's interesting though that you went straight to psychedelics and you like don't do some of yeah. the more common ones. So like I've tried pretty much everything, but like I don't smoke weed yeah. because it gives me really bad paranoia. Me too. Like horrible paranoia. Me too. Okay, so you've, tr- so you've tried it. Yeah, I smoke in like high school and middle school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would never could enjoy it. Yeah, it's like it like doesn't work with my brain chemistry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear. Yeah, and I, I respect the people that can do it. Yeah. I know people that wake up, it's on their mind. My engineer, he's like shaggy, you know? Like, all he does is smoke. All he's, day, every day. Yeah, it's just like, it's it's just it's just a part of him, you know? And people will tell me sometimes, too, they're like, oh, you just have to smoke a little more, yeah. and, like, you'll get into it. But I'm like, why would why would I want to yeah. even get to that point? Like, if it just doesn't work for me, I'm fine with that. I accept yeah, it. I agree. Um, I don't know. I don't know. In the okay, in the music industry, like specifically hip hop world, mm-hmm. do you feel like mental health is important, or like viewed more as a weakness? Im- I think it's important. That question is that's a difficult question, right? Because what you're saying, do I think it's important? Do I think it's viewed? There's almost two diff. Those are two questions at once. <laughs> okay, not one question. Like, okay, well, I think it's important is a question, and then is it viewed as a weakness? Is another question. But I don't know if it's viewed as a weakness, but I definitely don't think it's like. Stress. Something I just don't think it's something that's talked about. You know, I don't think like who who would be that person to say it, like like because it's the way music is set up. It's like almost like unfortunately, rap is like competition. Everyone's competing. Who's trying to help somebody else? Mm-hmm. Like who's gonna be like, hey brother, make sure you check on yourself. <laughs> like, like 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 that's not going on. What are the two phones? Is one for like Business normal and life personal. and one is mm-hmm. work? Yeah. And how do you separate the two when it comes to like romantic stuff? You always gonna start on a business phone, <laughs> and if it gets serious, you get to a personal phone. Okay. Most, most just stay on the business phone, <laughs> yeah, because it never gets too serious. But have you been in a relationship? I haven't been in a relationship. No, nah, not in, like, like a serious one. Not since April last year. Okay, so you're single right now. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Very single. But do you feel like you have a good? relationship or friendship with with your ba- with your daughter's mother oh cool <laughs> okay yeah, we're cool we're cool you guys spend the birthday together tomorrow though yeah she's she cool people she's i'm i'm real thankful for her you know she's a really um caring and understanding woman um she is not troublesome or, or she's not Looking for drama or like yeah, anything. Yeah, she's. Um, um, I tell her all the time. I'm. A, I'm, real appreciative, for her. Mm-hmm. You know, because, uh, 
It could have been something else. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, it's a team, it's teamwork, you know, it's partnership. Just no dirty diapers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the, that's the homie, though. That's my, that's, my, that's my partner, so. Yeah, we good. Well, I also think as your daughter gets older, you um, know, it's important to kind of, even if you guys aren't together in any capacity romantically, to, like, work as a team for parents is like yeah. good for someone's developing self-esteem and Absolutely. her identity and like what's best for the baby what's your favorite thing about being a dad i think just watching her grow mm -hmm. is it like weird do you ever have like moments where you're like this i can't believe i'm a dad or like this is real um, I don't know. It's, it it is interesting. It's a really interesting concept. Like watching, I've never watched somebody learn things. Mm -hmm. Like watching her learn, like watching her see her shadow for the first time. Like just little things like that are just like. Can she walk yet? Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. She she's um she's really silly. But uh, I don't know. I think it's just watching her experience things for the first time, like candy or something like a like a like a lemon, or just like just all these things are just so funny to me. You know, like she's a really dr dramatic character. Like she she shows everything. So um, it's crazy, you know. Um, but okay. I'm excited for her to grow because I know I'm. I'm like I'm, a, I'm my dad's son, right? So mm -hmm. my dad like was, I think without trying, he just really influenced me heavily to be a creative. You know, my dad was a creative. Uh, my grandfather was a creative. What does your dad do? Photography. Oh, cool. And what about your grandpa? What did photography. he do? Photography. Oh. Yeah. So it was destined for me to be a photographer, but I want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> they get more money. So. <laughs> um. But yeah, like photography and even like that, like that, like I wanted to do that, like her job, you okay. know? Yeah, of course. But I just, I, I was so fascinated with all the production and all this type of shit. But I was like, damn, I really want to have millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. No offense. But uh, <laughs> like, I just like, I wanted, I wanted, like when I was young, I just had big dreams. I wanted Maybach's and Rolls Royces and and 10 care earrings and, and it's uh, actually kind of crazy yeah. how young did you make that happen when you could 18 yeah that's yeah i was 18 man I, 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 <laughs> that's actually insane yeah i think i ain't gonna lie, i think I, by the time i was 23 i had spent 30 million dollars stop spent it absolutely <laughs> absolutely I, I was crazy absolutely i was crazy it's crazy yeah of course your mom's reaction Okay, wait, no, did, wait, is that going to come up or should I ask it again? Okay, sorry. Um, she's just asking, what was your mom's reaction to that? So my mom, my, is, my mom is, loves nice things, right? So I think she's spent a good amount of it with me. <laughs> but uh, Did you guys like buy, like you bought her a house? I mean, my mom, so I'm different, right? Like my, me and my mom share everything. Mm -hmm. So like all of my cards, all of my accounts, all everything is joint. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I did buy a house, but I didn't have to buy anything else because she had access to my account. To yeah. Buy whatever she wants. My mom has everything. But I mean, that is like serious generational yeah. wealth that could be passed down yeah. forever I mean, and ever. You keep working. Mm hmm. Yeah. You keep going. You know, like I, that's why I say if I could, I would have told myself to say. Yeah. Cause I did. I, Do you feel I, like you have a little bit better habits now? I, I like no, 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 no. I'm way better, <laughs> way better, way, way, way better, way better. I was crazy. Like Does I can't. Drake give you business you. advice? No, but I watch him, and he makes a lot of money. I know he makes a lot of money. <laughs> right. So like. But I, I'm like, do you, I'm he? You know. Yeah, you have to have a lot coming in, but you also yeah. you don't know what tomorrow brings you. Absolutely, right? 
And especially for your sister or your mom, if they're kind of, yeah. you know, and you have all of these people, you know, what if something happens tomorrow? Knock on wood, nothing happens to you, I but. I know. These are things that I have to grow to understand. Yeah. But I think it's yeah. great that you're even thinking about them and yeah. talking about them because that's the first step in all of this. And like you're Absolutely. saying, financial literacy is so important because, again, it's not taught in schools. Mm -hmm. And like if you didn't come from a family where like people were financially well off or knew this shit, how would the fuck would you know? And would people w will take advantage. You don't. You know? I don't know. Yeah. But shit, we do time. <laughs> we so do what time. are you working on right now? So many projects. You know? Okay, give me a couple of them. Um, or what are some of the you're most excited about? Definitely my frozen pizza. That's sick because I always wanted to have my own pizza. So that's not out yet, or is it's that? out? It's, oh, it's out. It's in Walmart. It's at Walmart, it's everyone. Walmart. So you can go pick Walmart. up. What's it called? Uh, Yachty's Pizzeria. Oh, okay. It's literally yeah. called Yachty's Pizza. Yeah. My face is right on the front. <laughs> Would you do a pizza restaurant? Do you have a pizza restaurant? I want to. In Atlanta or something? Yeah. It's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought about it. I want to think about starting. To Clothing, clothing line. Yeah, that yeah. would also do amazing. Honestly, just and Tyler like make the most money off of freaking socks. I wouldn't shit. be. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. Like I make merchant. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I made. I mean, you've worn yeah. my sweatshirts and yeah, stuff, and like, exactly. it's not like full designing. Obviously, it's just merch. But like, I make a yeah lot of money off I my think merch. It's, I think it's just you just having having put having to put in the. You just gotta put the time and do it, right? No, not that I can't. I just think it's when you sign up for certain things, you have to be ready for it. And same with podcasting, you know. I I just did a, a, a deal with um with um Spotify. I am free. I heart. No, no, with um I just froze. Is it a big podcast? Yes. Podcast network. Yeah. Uh, who? No. You went on a show. No, I, I did a deal. Oh, you did a podcast. Spotify. Yeah. No. iHeart. Nope. Sirius XM. No, I'm freezing right now. Hold on, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm so blank because I'm just, it's I've, okay. been, I've been talking from Terry right now. Uh, Wait, so you're doing a podcast? Barstool. Barstool? Yeah. Yeah, I just did a deal. What made with, you choose Barstool? Because Barstool's sick. So you like worse. I like, I like, like, it's like frat boy energy. I know. I don't <laughs> love frat boy energy. Yeah, it's like I, so not my yeah, thing. I, and it doesn't really give me your vibe yeah. either. But you know what it is? I just love them. I love. I, I mean, they I, do what they do very well. Yeah, I love Caleb Presley. I love Dave. You know, I, I, I just think they're cool. You know, like they're like, it's just frat boy energy. And I'm not like a frat boy or nothing. I'm definitely not white. But I think they're sick. I really do like them. You know, and then... Um, so when does that come out? It was been supposed to start, right? But um, uh, I, I postponed it due to just this album and like this uh, like wave that I'm going to get into like as a character. It's like a character. It's like a lot. So... um. First quarter next year. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. Know? But I'm super excited about it because I have like just I can say what I want to say. Totally. And you're a conversational person. It yeah. seems like communicating and talking is important to you. Yeah. Like, and I could just talk shit, <laughs> which is fun too. Shooting the shit. And so you have guests on or it's yeah. just you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I only shot my pilot, but my pilot is insanely. Um, and will it be it's video too? Because I yeah. feel like they like mm -hmm. video there. Yeah. Yeah. It's super, super. <laughs> But wild. No, it's been fun to jump into this world, but I feel like the advice I have kind of come up with is that sometimes when you have your hand in too many honey pots, yeah, it can kind of um like the art can mm -hmm. suffer. So yeah, like uh, yeah. picking one mm -hmm. or two or five things and doing it really well I is agree. better than doing like a hundred things super well, mediocre. Took me so long to do it because I just it's a strong commitment. Totally. You know, like, and to actually genuinely mm. do it or be behind it. Like I could probably pay someone to yeah. make me like super shitty generic merch, for example. Right. Like that's something I also take pretty seriously. Like mm. like the t-shirt I'm wearing, like I feel like my friends would actually wear it. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't, I like to wear these things. Like, um, All, this, all that plays a, a part, you know, mm -hmm. and signing yourself up for things like a podcast is at least a real one, like with a, with a like, network is it comes with a lot of responsibility totally. so i wanted to 
do it when I knew I was ready to uh, commit to it. Yeah. 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 Commit to like it. But I'm super excited. I can't wait to just start. Didn't you put out nail polish? Yeah. 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 I mean, wait, show us your nails. They're <laughs> yeah, even like, nicer nails than me. No, nah, these are fucked. My nails are it. nails are fucked. I do all type of shit, man. I just do anything that I want to do. Yeah. You know why not? Do what you want to do. Do you feel like you like to support a lot of like younger people who are I coming like to up and like support things I like? Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't really. I think if I like it, I like to support it. No, totally. But what about just like younger artists? Or yeah, like, if I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're like, I'm not just going to yeah. help anyone out. Yeah. Just, I have to yeah. fuck with you. Yeah. Or you or it. Yeah. But yeah. When does the psychedelic album come out? I can't say. Okay. But like soon. Mm-hmm. It's done though. But like I haven't released the date yet. And I don't want to because when you release the date and if you're not ready at that time. Then people get mad at you. Yeah. Or there's all this political stuff in the music it's industry that lot. I probably know nothing about. Yeah. But soon and I'm super hyped. I'm am. You know, I've taken like a year off. Mm-hmm. You know, like I. Uh, so When's the last time you put out a song? I put a song out four days ago. Okay. But before that. Yeah. Before that, a year. But yeah. the song did really good. It did like five, six million views. In, in, a, like four in four days. days. Yeah. It Congrats. Went, it was really, it was actually everywhere. Is this kind of your new no. style? No. The no. Song okay. Leak. It leaked. It wasn't even supposed to come out. I promise. It was not like on my mind. I would. I never would have dropped it. It just leaked, and now it's it's like everywhere. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> music is weird. Doing music is weird. This life is weird. Nothing could be planned. Nothing is promised. It's just you go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. I know. I still I can't wrap my head around you said you spent thirty million dollars. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Absolutely. That is so crazy. Yeah, yeah. I hope you still have some of the stuff you spent, though. I wouldn't though. be here if I didn't have no money. No, no. Of course, I know you have a lot of money, but I'm saying oh, the out, stuff. out of the $30 million the that you I mean, still have, have some of it. I, yeah. I, I have I, with the money or the stuff? The stuff. I don't know. Even if it's houses I got things, or cars I got things, or whatever it is. It. It's not just like spent it and it went in the trash can. Mm, uh, you didn't flush $30 million down the toilet. Please tell me you did that. No, not 30 <laughs> <laughs> I pushed a lot though. <laughs> oh, lot. I did a lot of stupid shit, you know. It's bad. <laughs> I just was living. I, I, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I, I did a lot of shit though, for sure. What are these shoes? These are, uh, I think, Yuna Yuna. Or Yuma Yuma. Or Yum Yum. Yum Yum. I think YME YME. Are they Japanese? I don't think so. They kind of look Japanese. Yeah, I think they're me. inspired, but I don't think they are. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, thanks. When's the last time you went to Japan? Three years ago. I guess COVID happened. Right before So everything's kind of fucked, yeah. But I want to go so bad. I'm going in April. So, really? Yeah. Why? Just to go? No, my dad lives there. Okay. Randomly. And he's getting married. Okay. And he's getting married in Japan. That's the first week of April. So I'm going to be in the wedding. Yeah. Japan is so beautiful. (laughs) And I really, I need to go back. It's a beautiful place. It's what do, what do you eat McDonald's? in Japan? No. Do you eat fish? No. Okay. Yeah, I never had fish. Have you ever gotten your insides checked out? Nah, bitch. It's probably <laughs> fucked in there. I know. Yeah. It's definitely a dark place in it. <laughs> no love. Yeah, it's, it's bad. But I mean, I don't drink and smoke, so I feel like it's not as bad as it could be. Yeah, true. But it's definitely... Uh, this will obviously come out after tomorrow, but what are you guys doing tomorrow for her birthday? Um, it's his baby's birthday. Um, I don't know. Just chilling. Mm-hmm. You know, for his birthday. Yeah. So, just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I got a lot of work to do, so... Um, just like all the different projects how do you organize it all you have a manager agent I have four or five managers four or five yeah. managers they manage different things so like one will do the podcast one will do well, the... no, no, no. like one will do touring you know, okay. and shows and then you know one will do like uh uh like like fucking all things involving me and Collaborations or like endorsements. Uh, 
Mm. And then I have a financial manager, my mom, my business manager, and then I have my music manager who, like, you know, handles everything music related. And so will they set you up with, like, producers or if you want to work with someone that's, specific? That's my to my do- does. Okay. Yeah. I, like, don't know that. Yeah. It's a lot of moving parts. No, totally. And that's what's so fun. Like, I'll talk, I have people on here who are chemists and mm-hmm. I have people in the music industry and I have actors. And it's like all the worlds are so different. Mm-hmm. And it's fun to sit down and just, you know, I'm not in the music world at all. But just to learn about it a little bit is, I think, cool for the listeners. Definitely a, move, a moving part business. A lot of moving parts. You can't do anything alone. That's another thing I realized in life. It's don't feel like you can do anything alone. Mm-hmm. Nothing successfully. It's hard. I mean, you could do a good amount, but like you always need a team. How do you delegate, or your mom kind of helps you? Well, you know, I'm 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 really good, and this is a great trait that I've been blessed to have. But I'm just a really good. I'm really good with um, uh, like just people, like just like character trait, like just like. Seeing someone feeling them out and just feeling that energy, you know, like I, I'm, I have a really good judgment of character, mm-hmm. you know, and like I, I always keep really honest people. I mean, obviously, I'm not perfect, things happen, shit happens, but you know, I'm really just for the most part, it's been really good, and I hope it stayed that way. I'm just gonna check, but yeah, I'm, 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 I, 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 I don't know, man, I'm, I, I enjoy it, you know, I enjoy all things that come with that have come with this life yeah. i mean yes you know. and practicing gratitude there yeah. are studies they've been doing that like literally i've been trying to do this like write a list every morning mm-hmm. even just three things that you're grateful for can change your whole day hmm. i don't even think i have to do that well yeah because you're thinking it yeah but for some of us we have to write it down yeah <laughs> we have to you know put in a little more work to think that i think you know like so many times i've done psychedelics or not even just that like just like i've been blessed to go to africa mm-hmm. and like just like um my even my grandmother worked in the church for like 40 50 years before retiring and um she worked with the outreach ministry which helped homeless people and and um, people in uh um uh, kids without fan, like without Orphan. parents, orphanages, oh, yeah. and the, just all these things that she did mm-hmm. for 50 years. So, like, I had just been around it, you know. So, I just kind of always known it could be worse. Yeah. You know, it could be much worse, you know. Do you consider yourself spiritual no. or religious? Mm-hmm. No. Or do, you, is do you believe in something l- <laughs> larger? Like, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, um, I believe in higher power. Yeah. Absolutely. I just don't believe in all the shit that comes with, like... The rigidity yeah, and the rules. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I grew up really right. religious. and yeah, Me too. I grew up super religious. What kind of religion? Christianity. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, Catholic. Yeah. Super Went to heavy. Catholic school. I just feel like there's a lot of shame. It is. In it. It is, absolutely. And that's not right. Mm-hmm. You know, against uh, whether it's sexuality, personality appearance that's well, not right yeah. you know they, they you know they say the bible says come as you are but people don't live by that it's cat <laughs> it's a lot of cat <laughs> i swear it is you know and we could see that's a whole another couple you know hours a couple hours going through talk. that so i don't even get i'm not don't shame judge anyone for their religion religious beliefs i don't even like talking about it if someone asks me i usually don't even bring it up because like, it's just it starts yeah that talk and it's like uh, what about your mom is she still super oh really yeah do you absolutely. guys ever clunk heads over that no she just found out i literally just told her recently that i'm 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 off that <laughs> and she was okay with it yeah it was it was a she, long conversation or, or she's saying that it'll, it'll come back around oh no that's was, how my dad is he's I like i like, know when you get older you'll find it again yeah I'm like, okay whatever helps like, you sleep at night <laughs> Where do you see yourself in 20 years? 45? Yeah. Hopefully, it's not still outside on the streets. Hopefully, married. Married. Yeah, I want five kids. More babies on the way. I want five. I don't want to wait till 45, though. I want five. I mean, kids. trust me, you're starting young yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want, I need five kids before 30. Yeah. Five kids before 40? 30. Or 30? Yeah. 
I want them to grow up together. Would you be open to, or like, would you want them all to kind of have the same mom? Uh, I want it. Yeah. I mean, I want it however it, it happens. Uh, however it feels right. But who always is getting trolled for having like a hundred kids from all different moms? I mean, a couple people. Nick Cannon. Yeah. No, but Nick Cannon specifically. Yeah. He, he has 10, though. I know. But that is a <laughs> wild. But I'm saying, aren't they pretty much mostly almost? I mean, he has a couple pairs of twins, but from different moms. That must be like a little bit stressful. Like, you're not like always hanging out with your kids at one place. I don't know. I don't do it. I know. But I mean, maybe it's something to think about, though, for all of us. <laughs> I'm like I'm almost 30 actually no I'm 27 but yeah I'm personally I don't know I'm not ready to have a kid yeah I but I'm that. also like a woman so yeah it's, it's a difference yeah it's much stronger responsibility yeah it's like I have to change the diaper mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you have to change everything you know so I'm kind of yeah, career yeah. focused right now and yeah, we'll absolutely. see what happens I got, I, you know, one thing I will say is I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm blessed to have a lot of help. Yeah. You know, another thing I don't take for granted. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. I w- Normally I ask people, like, where can they find you? All that shit. But yeah. we don't have to ask that. And we know what project's coming out, so we'll look for that. But thanks yeah. so much for doing this. No problem. And it's nice to have these, yeah, more in depth not as like vapid industry questions mm-hmm. kind of get to know you a little better so thank Just you like that. <laughs> well i appreciate that well, thank appreciate you that.